So hello again, good afternoon. After my previous uh, presentation held in the morning uh, that handled the manufacturing industry, now I'd like to get your attention with some other domain in which we've entered not that long time ago by doing a passenger flow simulation at Frankfurt Airport. You all know Frankfurt Airport, most, most of you have already been on it. They had several problems in the past, handling with passengers and queues and things like this. Uh, in my presentation, I would like to present your solution overview, what exactly we did for them. About the simulation model that we've created, some te technical insights that our client allows us to present to others as well. Some experimental results that validated the simulation that we've offered them. Before the questions, I will also show you a video made by the guys at Frankfurt Airport with our simulation and the whole solution they had in the end. Okay, some highlights on the model that we've made for the Frankfurt Airport. First of all, it's an agent-based passenger behavior-oriented pedestrian simulation. It's a uh, detail, it detail us multi-level uh, terminals. The Frankfurt Airport has three, sto is three stories high, so the pedestrian moving on it are present on multiple layers inside the simulation. There is support inside the sim simulation for different service types, check-in points, border control, Schengen, non-Schengen areas, uh, border control, board pass control, and others that are present in every airport in this world. There is support for diff different passenger transportation facilities, moving stairs, elevators, airport shuttles, automated stairs. Uh, when doing all the simulation, we take into account different distribution, for example, the Weibull, the normal, but others as well, which our client client requests us to use in order to have a more a professional approach on uh, the simulated uh, issues. Uh, there were consideration of changing capacity at different service points based on schedule and adaptive resource capacity when schedule was not available. So when some schedule of some personnel wasn't given to the simulation and alternative passenger routes through the terminal. Here is how the layout looks like. Each story of the Frankfurt Airport, each floor. What data does the simulation have as an input? There is the complete flight schedule, so every flight arriving, departing, the hours of each flight. The arriving, departing, and transfer passenger counts, namely the number of passengers that will arrive with the flight that should be on a certain flight or the ones that have to have connecting flights and need to transfer from one flight to the other. Then there's the resource, resource schedule, namely all the personnel inside the airport is scheduled. If it's not provided, then ultimately one is calculated by the simulation. There is a route schedule and model parameters also as an input, for instance, processing times that, and distributions, passenger walking speed, bus transfer time, arrival time before departure, and many other such parameters for the input of the simulation. So that in the end, we can provide as output both numerical data and visualization. By numerical data, we mean detailed tracking information, tracking and tracing of each passenger in the airport throughput and, it, and uh, other statistics for different service points inside the airport, check-ins, border controls, customs, and a very nice fragmentation matrix that I will show you when I run the video. For visualization, we have utilization statistics for all the presented, but in a nice visual form. Service utilization correlation, flight to service utilization correlation as well. Model parameters, what parameters, some of the parameters that the model, the simulation model accepts or requests, let's say, were the processing times, passenger walking speeds, bus transfer time that take passengers to the airport, deboarding times, 
and, and others, of course, but be among them, arrival time before each flight. Distributions, as I already mentioned, normal, Weibull, uniform, and others. For model configuration, so namely when we built the certain model, we've made the mapping of all the gates, arrival gates, departing gates, with certain clusters. Uh, each list of passenger check-in points was mapped also to different type of cluster. There were defined all the moving paths for the passengers inside the airport, the ones that in which they were allowed to go, not the ones in which personnel moved, for instance, because they have other routes, those weren't included. And distances between different clusters and services inside the airport. For a specific scenario configuration, we've used flight and non-transfer passenger data, transfer passenger data, and pass, uh, personnel availability at every checkpoint. All this data is important inside the simulation from an Excel file. Uh, to demonstrate the strength of the simulation, I've given here the, the configuration of the laptops that we use in our company, some of them, on which the model was developed. So the performances that I will show in the end can also be obtained, not on a supercomputer, but a computer that has, let's say, you can have one at home. It's not, not that sophisticated. And Logic 6.5, this is what we've used for developing. It was more than one year ago. Intel Core dual laptops, four gigabytes of RAM. This was enough for handling this project in a period of six to eight months. How we did it? Of course, on top of any logic simulation engine and the libraries that I presented a couple of hours before, our in-frame Synapse simulation suite library, and of course, the Analogic Pedestrian Library for uh, modeling the passengers. We've constructed several models on top of basic library hours so that we can have each point of the simulation covered, namely passengers, service providers, and statistics and mod models that uh, refer to passenger moving throughout the airport. We have here a statistics and reporting schema that in the end will generate reports that will be given forward to the client system, which then will take decisions according to what data the simulation provided. Then there is a passenger behavior model inside the airport and other models that also are, let's say, related to how the passengers move throughout the model. They need the ground in which to move to. They interact with different service models and there is a queuing model for passenger moving throughout the airport. Afterwards, there is the building model, each floor has a different model, so that in the end, we can have the entire Frankfurt Airport <coughs> model, the layout on which pedestrians move, which <coughs> inform information for the system are gathered again from the client via one of our other libraries constructed for this purpose especially, to provide the data to the entire simulation model so that in the end, we give important reports so that decisions can be taken. I told you about the reporting schema. It uses elements from our in-frame synapse simulation suite library. All messages that are thrown throughout the airport from every passenger is collected here and sent so that it, they can be visualized in a very, a very good way, bar charts, pie charts, different ways of visualization of statistics, and also sent to log files so that data can be processed afterwards the simulation is run. Now I would like to talk to you about some experiment comparison results. We've made the model, it was from our point of view, it looked very nice, it was very good, but we had to validate at the client. So they had to be convinced that, okay, this tool works, it, it provides us uh, 
let's say, the, how our airport will look like six hours from now when providing the data that we have at the current moment. Uh, for this, there were taken several checkpoints where measurements were made. In my example, it's checkpoint immigration B on the third floor. Here, in every part, there are cameras installed, but there was a design camera to see passenger counts at each 30 minutes, 20 minutes, and 10 minutes. All this data is also provided by our simulation, so that, in the end, an accuracy measurement by correlation or linear regression can be done to see how well our simulation uh, can be compared to the real data that is obtained from the camera inside the airport. And the results are here. With the green line, you can see the number of passengers at each 10 minutes at that certain checkpoint. And with the, the blue line <laughs> is what the simulation gave. As you can see, the tendency is pretty much the same. The values are very close. And to be more precise regarding measurements, here are some values. Oh, sorry. <laughs> that. <coughs> now it works fine. Okay. Different statistics from different observations that were made. I would only like to highlight some key figures. This is, means an 84%. 91. 92. So this is an 81 or, or 84, 92 percent of how our simulation is compared to the real results inside the airport. So the data, our data fits, our results provided with the simulation fit 90% when measuring each 10 minutes the number of passengers at a certain checkpoint. Let's see how it did when reporting every 30 minutes. As before, tendency is quite the same. Looking at the numbers, 92. 96, 96, even better. So 96% correlation between the data, the simulation made by provided, how that, how those pass, how the number of passengers in that certain point will be compared to the actual results inside the airport, recorded by their cams. Also, I'd like to highlight that all these measurements were done by them, not by us. So they had this tool to demonstrate the, if our solution would fit their needs or not. They were impressed, so were we. <laughs> to make an uh, overall of the results that were obtained, 84%, 90, 91, the error square, and all other results above 95, 94%. From our point, it was more than enough. We had to meet at least 80%, so it was perfect. Moving on. I would like to show you the video. Here's how the simulation looks like, the layout. how complex the layout is.
this, the logic behind what you've seen before. The components that we've modeled, how the data is imported inside the simulation. You can see coupling between our elements, basic and logic elements, use, delays, different function variables. Simple flow. After running the simulation, decisions were took by the airport, by switching gates, and different signaling lights. Four floors. Here's the fragmentation matrix I was telling you about in the, be in the beginning. It shows the routes that were mostly uh, followed by people inside the airport. <laughs> Thank you very much. And <laughs> oh, questions? Yes, please, the questions. How many pedestrians uh, were on the floor uh, during the simulation at the, at the top, the maximum amount in one moment? It's a technical question. <laughs> yes, I know. Uh, a couple of thousand, <coughs> ten thousands. About ten thousand? I can't tell you the exact number, but a couple of tens of thousands. And this is pedestrian library, yeah? Pedestrian library together with our own library. So the in-frame central suit was also used besides the pedestrian used by any logic. And the number of walks? Many. I, ca I can't say the number, sorry. Well, more, more questions? Uh, <coughs> yeah, thank you for the presentation. There is a question here, yep. a lady. The result uh, was very impressive. I wonder if you can measure the uh, impact of your simulation, for example, um, would that improve the efficiency of the airport or did that increase the volume of the passengers? Or shorten the time they have to wait or some, do you have any measure for that? Uh, we have what they told us last year was the busiest year in the airport history and they managed it quite nicely without any problem with our system running 24 seven. Thank you. Are you using uh, validation for system correlation and regression only? Uh, no, this analysis was made offline, so the, all the data provided by the statistics was compared to the data made by them in an uh, offline tool. So it wasn't inside any logic, it was outside. Oh, so some other validation software. for system, yes? For the validation, exactly. Yes. A uh, very interesting presentation. Um, two questions. Yes. Uh, one technical. Uh, how did you get the presentation curve so passenger arriving at the airport? And the second question uh, uh, is related to the 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 the, <coughs> the choice of a manager. Why? What is the uh, the real benefit of an application like that? Uh, well, well I can, how can I convince the manager to buy, to spend a budget uh, and to allocate a budget for an application like that? What are the savings or, I mean, the improvement in, in effectiveness, for instance? I will start with the second question, very good one. First of all, there's 
passenger satisfaction due to, the, due to the fact that they don't have to wait in infinite lines. So they don't have to come one hour before those two hours that they request at the airport so that they get the check-in and all the other areas that he needs to be there. No, not so long queues at control, at uh, the baggage, uh, where they, before you get in the plane. And of course, all this brings more and more passengers to your airport, which is what man, uh, airport managers like to. The airport to be more and more utilized by others because then other companies will come because it's an attractive airport and in the end it will bring more and more money to them. They use, intelligently they can use the resources, they can see where exactly they need them and how many do they need. So there is no, there is never too much resource utilization or too low so that you can face the traffic that is on a certain checkpoint, for instance, check-in or border control, pass control. And for the sec first question, I would like please to repeat it. I didn't understand exactly what you meant by the curves. How did you get the presentation curves of passenger <coughs> at the airport? Presentation curves? Presentation, curve? the way the passengers arrive at the airport. All, all the routes you mean were provided after discussions with the represent representatives from the airport, the guys that were in contact with us in making this solution. So it was after discussion with them. Okay. Hmm? More questions? No. Sorry. Um, uh, in one of the slides, it was uh, uh, written that no, you have no, compared no. the result uh, with uh, data provided by the uh, video that was yeah. available. Uh, have you have used uh, uh, some tools that provide counting and tracking of uh, what they are doing people, or it just uh, a comparison, a qualitative comparison? See, maybe if there was a crowd in a place or another one. Well, the data provided from the uh, video cameras from the airport mm -hmm. was data that the people at the airport did. So it wasn't the measurements done by us. The yes, they, but they um, it was th this video, uh, it, it was uh, elaborated by some software to provide, for instance, the number of people that moving along a special path, or was just a qualitative uh, to checking? Be honest, I don't know how they did it. It was a tool for validating our model, so okay. I'm sure that they did the best so that they know our simulation does good okay. or bad, okay. for instance. Okay. Okay. So it was the, in their interest to have a professional tool, a professional tool that gathered the information from that camera that made an exact uh, data providing so that it can be compared to the, simula to the data okay. provided by the simulation. So I'm thinking it was something professional so that the data is very accurate. Okay. Because such a system, when you have it installed, it's can be very valuable if it gives you the correct data. If not, it's, it's of not you, no use. Okay. No good okay. use. Okay. Thank you very much. Well, more, more questions? Uh, are you taking into account that the walking speed of passengers might depend on the density of passengers in the room? Or yes. Great. <laughs> Impressive. <laughs> there are certain algorithms implemented that take into consideration many aspects. Some can be detailed, but this was a direct question from someone who knows these things, and of course, we did it. You can understand that without something like this, it wouldn't be very valuable in the end. Okay, thank you for the presentation. Thank you very much.